friends, it's Jennifer Hernan at jenniferhernan.com. Today we're going to talk about a quick and easy way to put a screen capture in any kind of document that you are creating online. If it's a blog post, a white paper, an ebook, a PDF, anything, a lot of times a picture really is worth a thousand words. And it's much easier to explain something to your audience by showing them a picture. So to do this, we're going to start with a free tool called Jing. You can find Jing by going to techsmith.com, and you'll see under their top downloads here, Jing. Just click on Jing, and it'll take you to the download page. Either click on Start Mac Download or Windows Download, and with a couple of minutes, you will have Jing installed on your computer. Once you've got it on there, it hangs out up here in the right-hand corner of your um, computer, just you know, waiting for you to have some awesome picture on your screen that needs to be captured and included in some work that you're doing. So it will be up there for you whenever you need it. Now for the example that we're going to use today, I'm going to show you how to insert a picture into a blog post. So let's go to a new blog post I'm doing called How to See All Posts by Your Favorite Facebook Pages. This is kind of a timely topic because Facebook seems to be hiding post pages, or I'm sorry, page posts from the news feed even if you've liked the page. So I want to make sure people add me to their interest list and then use their interest list so they can see all the great content I put out for them once they've liked my page. I could just explain that to them in words here, but it would honestly be difficult for them to follow. So I want to show them a picture of exactly what they need to do when they're on my page. To do that then I'm going to go to my page and I want them to come over here and click on the little wheel and click on add to interest list when they're on my page. So I'm going to take a picture to show them that that's exactly what they need to do. I'll go up here where Jing is hanging out. I'll click on the top button here that's the capture button. Once I click on it, it gives me these two yellow lines that's going to allow me to define the area that I'm capturing and see what I'm doing really easily. And all I have to do then is click down on my mouse and hold it down and drag it over the area that I want captured. So I drag it over what I want my picture to look like. When I release my mouse, then it will show the tools, with, you know, what I can do next with this. Now, if you don't like this area that you've captured, if you, or you haven't captured it yet, if you don't like this picture you've created so far, all you have to do is take your cursor and hold it down and move it back and forth, up and down. You can change the boundaries before you capture it. And if you have a size in mind that you want, you can see the numbers are over here showing you the width and the height right there. So once you're done, and this is the picture you are wanting to capture, then you go down here and click on Capture an Image. And that will bring you to the Jing Editor. Now, in the Jing Editor, usually the first thing I do is go ahead and name it, um, you know, just whatever, obviously, whatever you're going to remember when you need to go find it. And then I go about editing this, marking it up in any way that will be helpful to my audience. I want them to see Add to Interest List. So maybe I'd start with an arrow. I click on the arrow up here, and then once you click on it, your cursor becomes kind of like a pencil. I just use my cursor and I draw the arrow. And I've got green right now, but as you can see, I could change that to any color here that I've got in the drop-down menu over here where the colors are. Now, for extra effect, let's say I wanted to highlight that. I could just come down here to the highlighter. My highlighter is currently yellow. I could also change that color. And again, my cursor becomes like a pen. And I can just drag it. You can see I can make it as thick or as thin as I need to. If I don't get it just right, I can go and pull it up where I need to. One of the things I love about Jing is it's very forgiving. You can change and move things around just as if you were drawing with a pencil and an eraser. Even easier than that. Okay, I've got this highlighted. Now let's say I want to go further and even draw a frame around it. Come over here and click on frame. And again, using my little magical pencil here, come back here frame, it would allow me to draw a frame around any place that I wanted to draw a frame. And again, I can make it as big or as little as I want. And once I'm done with it, I can move it around if I want to. So I've got a frame around it. Let's say I want to move this a little bit to make it just perfect. I can even make it slant up a little more. You can do anything you want here. Now, I've got that. The one more tool in Jing it allows me to do is I can add some text if I want to. So let's say I wanted to put click here over here. I would click on the text box and then just wherever I wanted a text box, put it in there. 
and I can choose to change the um, kind of font I'm using if I want to. I could change the color of the text here. I could change the color of the background here if I wanted to. Say I wanted to go with the blue text just to make it a little different. So I start typing here, click here. Now that's too big. So let's say I wanted to make it a little smaller. I just move the text, make it a little smaller there. And you can resize this however you need to do it. Once you're done with it, you can move it around. This isn't exactly how I would do this because this isn't very beautiful, but just to show you what you can do with the tools here. I don't want to go off on my page, but I can make the box smaller now if I want to to fit everything in that I've done. And you can just play with it until you get it exactly how you want it to be. My lettering might be a little off here. Excuse me. Oh, I just added another box. And if you make mistakes like I do a lot of times, down here there's an undo. Simple to undo. And you just play around with it until it is what you want it to be. Now I want to move it over here. Oops. Ah, undo. And there you go. It's done. Oops, it moved on me. Move it back over there. And then, once you've got it just the way you want it, you can capture it. And you do, or you can say, I'm sorry, you've captured it. You can save it. And you do that then by clicking on the save button here. And it will pull it up so you can save it to your documents. Hit save. It'll show you it's saved. Now let's go over and put it in the blog post. Now you would create this picture the same way no matter what you were going to insert it into. I just want to finish the example by inserting it into a blog post for you. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my HTML tag. I'm going to go over here to Upload Insert. And we'll simply choose the file that I just saved the picture in, which I call Interest List. Oops, I don't know the alphabet. There we go. And open. And it is now adding that for me. You can see the picture of it. I want it to be in the center. So I've got that checked here. I'll insert it into my post. And there you can see it's been inserted in. Let's go over and take a visual look at it. And you can see I've got the picture that I just created right here with all my fancy little markups from Jing. So all I need to do now is add some text above it to tell people exactly what I'm explaining them to do. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. This is a great tool that will really enhance the value that you are able to provide to your audience. And it's free, and it looks great. It looks professional, which makes it even better. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.